So here we are asked to find the exact length of the given curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And to help us visualize the problem at hand, we've sketched the graph on the right-hand side. So we're going from x equals 0, starting right here, to x equals 1, which is right up here. And our goal is to find the length of this curve right here. And to do that, we're going to use the arc length formula, as we've shown right here on the screen. And we can tell that in order to successfully use this formula, we're going to need to calculate the derivative, the dy dx. So this will be our first step. We'll rewrite the function y equals 1 plus 6x raised to the power of 3 halves, and then we'll do the derivative with respect to x. So dy dx equals the derivative of 1 is 0, and then here we have to use the power rule. So multiply the power by the coefficient, 6 times 3 halves. This is going to give us 9x, and then subtract 1 from this exponent, and you will get x to the 1 half. So now we can begin to plug it into the arc length formula. We see that the arc length equals the integral from our lower x value of 0 to our upper x value of 1. And then we have the expression 1 plus 9x to the half. And then don't forget that dy dx is going to be squared according to the arc length formula here. And then we'll do this with respect to x. Now we need to simplify this before we integrate. And perhaps what we can do is rewrite the 9x to the half as 9 times the square root of x. Not a necessary step, but we might remember that by doing that, when we square the square root of x, they essentially cancel. That's going to leave you with just x. But don't forget to square the 9 as well. So you'll actually have the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus 81x dx. Now the rest is just integration. Sometimes we can evaluate these using a simple u substitution, so we're going to try that. We will let u equal the quantity underneath the square root, so it's 1 plus 81x. Then we'll differentiate, so we have du equals, again, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 81x is just 81, then dx. I like to solve for dx when doing u substitutions, so multiply both sides by 1 over 81. That will cancel out the 81 on the right-hand side, so we see that dx is equal to 1 over 81 du. It might also be useful to change the bounds in terms of u. Right now we have these as our bounds, but these are x values, so what we'll do is change the bounds as well. So let's start with the lower bound, so that was x equals 0. We're going to plug that into our equation here, so we can see that u would equal 1 plus 81 times 0. This shows us that u is equal to well, it's still going to be, it's going to be 1 here. So there's your lower bound in terms of u. And then your upper bound will plug in 1 for x. So then we'll have u equals 1 plus 81 times 1. This will work out to 82. So those are your new bounds. And therefore, you can rewrite the integral as follows. You're going to integrate from your new lower bound of 1 to your new upper bound of 82. And then you're going to have the square root of u. And then for the dx, don't forget that that was simplified to 1 over 81 du. Next, we will factor out the 1 over 81. So it's then times the integral from 1 to 82. Of Now, the square root of u, why don't we write that as u to the power of 1 half? That will make our integration easier. So now we're integrating. We'll add 1 to the exponent. That will make it u to the power of 3 halves then multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 thirds. Don't forget about the 1 over 81 in front, and then we're evaluating this from 1 to 82. We can simplify by multiplying the numerators here and the denominators there, so that's going to give us 2 over 243. And then we'll plug in the upper bound, which is 82 to the 3 halves, minus the lower bound, which is 1 to the 3 halves. Now, 1 to the 3 halves, of course, is just 1, so you can actually simplify that. And there is the answer to your question. And for any purists out there who don't really like 82 to the 3 halves written in that manner, we can go a little bit further, I suppose. Recall that that's equivalent to the square root of 82 raised to the power of 3. And again, this is just for the purists. That can be written as the square root of 82 times the square root of 82 times the square root of 82. Now, of course, the square root of 82 times the square root of 82 right there, that's just 82. 
So you could also write this as 82, and then you have that extra factor of radical 82 there, and then minus 1. So this would be an equivalent way of expressing the answer.